Hello, I'm Brian Foster, and I am talking about Spiritism, brought to us by Alan Kardec, codified by Alan Kardec in the 1850s. And today I'm talking about a book, Through the Mist. And this is about a spirit who risked to remain nameless, who died in an accident in the late 19th century. A very religious person, and was brought to heaven rapidly and helped. And he wanted to send his messages, so he sent it to a medium who wrote his messages down so he could, we could read and learn what he learned about heaven. And this corresponds a lot to what Spiritism tells us. Now, Spiritism sends us messages for many spirits in the 1850s, but in Spiritism tells us they're going to keep communicating with us for a many, many, as long as we're here on earth. So there's been Spiritist mediums, Leon Denis in the late 19th century, um, Chico Xavier in the 20th century, and others besides, and Tivaldo Franco. So this message will keep coming to us, and they'll keep telling us the truth about heaven and the spirit world as uh, according to our level of culture and technology. So he learned so much, and he knew so much of what he learned did, did not correspond to what he learned when he was in the physical body. So the spirit author asked a higher spirit why the truth of the spirit world can't be communicated to those on earth. And here is the answer. That same law of attraction and repulsion exists and regulates the intercourse between the two worlds. Let me tell you my own experience whenever I have tried to open this communication. Generally, I have found the persons to whom I desired to speak intolerantly dogmatic in favor of some accepted creed, which prevented them honestly and freely inquiring into any new spiritual truths. Such an attitude of mine was by no means congenial to me, and my presence being equally repugnant to them, a suspicion was engendered, which I was powerless to overcome. Therefore, I had no choice but to retire and leave such inquirers to the mercy of those who, in their ignorance, would affirm the infallible truth of the accepted creed. Then the spirit asked his mentor, Were you not able to expose the ignorance of such teachers and so do away with their authority? And the answer is, not very readily, for the simple reason that their low spiritual condition more closely assimilated with the ignorance favored by the creed. My teachings, being more spiritual, received no sympathy, were pronounced to be false and deceitful. I was commanded to retire without further attempting to disturb their faith and leave the work to those who had been tried and thought to be true, because they confirmed those ideas which had been previously taught and professed. Then the spirit asked, And did you leave them? And he answered, Undoubtedly, I had no right to force my presence upon any person to whom it was objectionable. They were seeking, and they found just what they sought for, not truth, but a confirmation of their creed. They are satisfied, though we are cognizant of the fact that their intercourse serves to ground their error more deeply, whereas it is designed to promulgate the truth. We have to be content to wait in the hope of some favorable opportunity to correct the mistake, and when it occurs, use our best endeavors to remedy the evil. And that is page 87 in the PDF version. So, <clears throat> spirits have warned us against using the Bible literally to create dogma or other spiritual communications the ancient prophets. The messages of love, charity, fraternity are eternal but the other writings were influenced by the level of technology and culture at the time of spirit communication. Spiritism has revealed that as the earth moves forward, so will the level of information be more detailed and correct. Hence, it is necessary to study spiritism to understand what the spirit world wishes us to absorb in our present age. Christian prophets, mostly wonderful, dedicated people, have this tendency to interpret their messages, visions, and trips to heaven through the lens of their religious beliefs. As an example, few prophets bring back any information about reincarnation. This is because their mind is closed to this possibility. Wise spirits who may have tried to hint at this process probably learn not to broach the subject any further. The great American medium Edgar Cayce was brought up a Christian. He did not believe in reincarnation. The spirit world did not openly state that we do travel many lives. Only after he discussed the effect of past lives on people's present life 
did he finally accept the reality of reincarnation. Hence, listen to the dedicated Christian prophets, but know they are only able to see what they are able to see and to understand and process only up to their current aptitude. This doesn't mean there's anything amiss with them. They are trying their best. Open your eyes to the basic tenets of what the spirits have told us. Read my book, Spiritism 101, The Third Revelation. It covers a summary of the reason why we are here, how we incarnate for our own edification, and explains the workings of the spirit world and heaven. God bless.